Now, following the 2023 general elections, which saw heavy campaigns from contestants for various positions, the dust in the national political arena is not settling. There's, however, a typhoon being witnessed in the institutions of higher learning as they approach the air campus elections. The typhoon is, however, not turbulent as it used to be in the earlier days before the introduction of the University Amendment Bill of 2015 by the then National Assembly Majority Leader Garissa Township MP Alden Duale. This therefore sets ground for our discussion tonight and joining me is Harrison Ngangar of Kenyatta University and Mushoki Kirera of uh, Technical University of Kenya, both aspiring student leaders and potentially future leaders. Thank you so much gentlemen for dedicating your time for this discussion. All right, and uh, probably just get the ball rolling. We'll start with you, Carrera. What is the state of student leadership um, from your institution? How would you describe the state of student leadership at the moment? Okay, what I would say is that a village champion is a champion in his or her own village. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine a situation where you have a village champion, but they're not recognized by the whole village in itself? What happens is that you have a particular faction not exactly recognizing this, and this leads to various issues. Mm -hmm. The village champion may not have these privileges. They may not be able to do several things. They may also get influence from outside because, again, they are the village champion, but once not recognized, then it doesn't go as well. Mm -hmm. That is what ha is happening with the delegate system. All right. All right. Now, um, let me get Harrison. What's your take? We are talking about the student leadership. What do you, I mean, what's the state of uh, student leadership in uh, your institution, Kenyatta University? And do you feel really that um, with the state of things that uh, the interests of uh, the students are articulated in the current student leadership? Yeah, so maybe I will start with an introduction. Mm -hmm. My name is Harrison, an outgoing Congress. And they come in, Kusa Chairperson. Yeah, for the state of our university, I would say it's below the expectation of most of the students, given that uh, there are a lot of things that uh, the students are expecting from us, the student readers. And uh, in uh, consecutive of years, mm -hmm. the student readership have not delivered to what the student expected. Mm -hmm. So the status right now, uh, it's just below average. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's a call that they need. There is a need for improvement on mm -hmm. the same, mm -hmm. and uh, for the delegate system and the involvement of students in selecting their readers, mm -hmm. I believe uh, within the years that the system have worked, mm -hmm. we have seen a failure because you find students even don't know their readers. So mm -hmm. even the accountability mm -hmm. on matters readership, mm -hmm. you not find it very effective. Even if I don't know my president, then mm -hmm. I even I don't have a chance to sit with that president mm -hmm. to hear if he has delivered what he or she promised to these comrades. So you check the status, mm -hmm. you see even the accountability, it's still worrying and mm -hmm. it's a need improvement. All right. Now, um, let me just get to back to you, Carrera, with this, uh, because we're talking about uh, the delegate system. Of course, now this is the system of uh, elections that being used in campus following um, the bill that was introduced in uh, Parliament in 2015 by the then um, MP for Garissa Township, uh, Aden Duale. So it's seven years down the memory lane since uh, this bill was introduced to Parliament. So. Looking at this bill, did it satisfy the needs that it intended to satisfy? And then, was this bill really for posterity? Is it self-sustaining since it was introduced, probably um, satisfying whatever it wanted to uh, satisfy? Is it for posterity that uh, it is still self-sustaining in the years coming forward? What I would say is, if it was trying to curtail the whole process of student activism, mm -hmm. or rather being able to fight for what is right, then it did achieve that. But in actual sense, it really neglected the needs of the students per se. Mm -hmm. Because for example, if we want something addressed, then what should we do? Should we just give it to somebody who has a position of formal authority without any informal authority, that is the influence? No, it becomes very, very difficult. And also, at the end of the day, you have a particular individual in that context, mm -hmm. and this individual may not be able to push for things because they do not have backing. And the very moment they're pushed against a wall and the wall is not present, then what happens? Things go haywire. You can mm -hmm. simply fall off a cliff. So again, it is not an, a, a, a particular strategy or particular 
would say. But if the goal was to really quell the student activism, mm -hmm. then it really did. All right. So um, what do you make of this bill? Of course, uh, Harrison, you had started to mention about uh, this bill. Um, what do you make of this bill? Is it, uh, was it meant for posterity? Should we continue with things the way they are in this bill? Or do you feel there are some amendments that need to be done to this bill to make sure that uh, the needs and the interests of the students that you're representing in different capacities are well articulated? Yeah, I believe uh, maybe the bill came because if you check the previous years, mm -hmm. we have had uh, the student activism affecting uh, the, the student fraternity in terms of strikes. Mm -hmm. Now and then there was uh, demonstrations, people are just maybe destroying the, the university properties. Mm -hmm. So the bill maybe came to address some of those issues, mm -hmm. but I believe it wasn't meant now to... Now erase mm -hmm. the student readership mm -hmm. in a manner that student student issues are not affect uh, they are not are not addressed mm -hmm. because given uh, now the introduction of the bill gave it uh, gave the administration a chance mm -hmm. now even to introduce leaders who can't address matter students mm -hmm. so you find uh, as much as it had maybe a common uh, a common good to ensure that uh, there is uh, that stability in the university. Mm -hmm. It also affected at large the student readership mm -hmm. and the way matters students are addressed. So mm -hmm. for me, I feel that it should one be erased and uh, removed from the system. Mm -hmm. We need uh, to go back to one man, one vote. Mm -hmm. We need to go back to the popular the popular voting mm -hmm. of the, the system which was there previously before the delegates system because you find uh, this this uh, system mm -hmm. only give a few people to select their readers. Mm -hmm. And when a reader is selected by a few people, then maybe the larger community might not recognize mm -hmm. and give him or her the legitimacy that he or she requires. So for me, I feel they should just scrap it off and uh, bring, it, bring back the popular mm -hmm. way of voting so mm -hmm. that we can know our readers and also we can now bring back the activism mm -hmm. of students and mm -hmm. student readers that was there before mm -hmm. the bill was introduced. All right. Um, I don't know, Carrera, how do you want to weigh in on this? Do you feel really the bill should be scrapped off and uh, we go back to how things used to be in the past? Or uh, you feel that uh, probably you should just make amendments uh, to the bill that was introduced in 2015? I strongly believe it should be scrapped off, mm -hmm. majorly because, again, it does not give leaders the legitimacy that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And again, it curtails the, demo the democratic right of a student leader and of its people as well in that mm -hmm. particular institution. So all in all, I strongly believe that we have so many things we can advocate for if we have everybody involved in the process. Mm -hmm. Again, as I said, there is formal authority and informal authority. Mm -hmm. So the very moment you have somebody in a formal authority position, and they do not have that informal authority, that influence, what does it do? You can barely fight for students' needs. Mm -hmm. You can barely go and talk about the things that are facing, the issues facing our students. Mm -hmm. So again, I feel as if it should be scrapped off or something else be introduced as well. Um, along the lines of ideologies and parties, but that is generally the uh, trajectory I'd want it to take, mm -hmm. but not this whole process that curtails the activism that students can actually mm -hmm. demonstrate. All right, interesting. Now, um, maybe I just want to borrow from uh, what we saw, the events we saw uh, uh, before the 2020 general elections. We saw um, the Azimio side, which was headed by, of course, uh, uh, Right Honorable Raila Molodinga. They made uh, recommendations to the electoral body that uh, for us to participate in this electoral process, these are some of the requirements. These are some of the re uh, recommendations that uh, we need so that, um, uh, you know, we'll be satisfied with the results that uh, shall be announced uh, following these uh, general elections. So for you, now that you are eyeing uh, the chairmanship of uh, the different institutions, of course, that you're coming from, and uh, it's interesting, of course, because you told me that you've served in uh, different capacities, uh, uh, you're going, of course, uh, leaders in different, of course, documents. So, have you tried to table some of these recommendations that, uh, yes, we have a bill, we have a bill uh, that was passed in Parliament on how things are supposed to be run, but uh, as we've served in different dockets, we feel this is what should be done, that the, 
the, the 2015 bill, the universal amendment bill, we feel it's not in a way uh, representing what uh, really our electorates need. So have you gone ahead to be accountable, of course, now to try to amplify the voice of the students by rectifying the, uh, the, the, you know, the voices and the needs of the students in terms of leadership? Harrison, yeah. I think we'll just start with oh. you. So for me, I would say, uh, previously, uh, yeah. if you see the student leaders in the different capacities and different universities, they have not come together, mm -hmm. even uh, maybe to draft something that will be presented in the parliament or in the Senate mm -hmm. for a proposal of a different system of voting or a different system to run our election. And uh, this one would only call now for us to mm -hmm. just team up and ensure we sit down, have a way forward as student leaders mm -hmm. and uh, bring back. You see, we had good organizations previously, mm -hmm. which used to bring together student leaders and students from different institutions, which ensured that such bills and such, such, uh, such bills are tabled in the parliament. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, I would only call to the student leaders, even in different institutions, either in Nairobi or outside, that they come together. Mm -hmm. Because at this time, we can just come together, form something, and uh, draft a bill mm -hmm. that maybe would be a game changer mm -hmm. now for the delegates' bill. Because mostly the unity, because if you draft something and you want to take it to the parliament, mm -hmm. I believe it's affecting the whole student fraternity, not mm -hmm. just in your institution, but even in other institutions in Kenya. So. And I've not seen that unity among, among us to the student leaders mm -hmm. that would now give a voice. Because you also need a voice, you also need an, an influence that you're able to push such motions and such bills to go and uh, be implemented in the parliament. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would only view it that it's just a lack of unity mm -hmm. that have not that have made us not make such proposals. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time also we as the student leaders mm -hmm. to team up and come up with a good proposal and a game changer for mm -hmm. the delegates bill. All right, Kerera, what's your take on this? Uh, this is a bill that has been in the country for about seven years. So um, if you assume office, of course, in the position that you're vying for, is it something that uh, you'd advocate for that uh, we get to see a change in terms of student leadership? Yes, yes, I would greatly. Mm -hmm. There's a Latin saying that says, e pluribus uno, which means out of many, one. Mm -hmm. I agree with what Harrison had actually said. It's that the very moment we come together is when we realize that all our problems, all our issues are quite similar. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would definitely stand against it mm -hmm. or rather speak on it so that it could be adapted a bit more to accommodate our students. And as he said, a unifying factor is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think this is a moment to call to action to all youth, all university students, colleges, TVETs and all these individuals who are within that bracket mm -hmm. to at least come out and unify because at the end of the day a unified front is better than a divided one. Right. At this point what has happened is that we are very much divided but what we want to do or what we have to do mm -hmm. is come together in unison and be able to talk about the things that face us, uh, the issues that we face, mm -hmm. the problems that we have, the solutions that we can be able to develop and yeah. I think with that we'd be creating a country that would be very suitable staying in the future. All right. Interesting. Now, um, of course, just uh, trying to listen to some of the points, of course, that you're bringing forward. Uh, it, I may be able to, of course, come into conclusion that uh, some of the powers of uh, the students, uh, the, the, the kind of powers that the student leadership had before, had been strangled, of course, with this bill. Because uh, traveling back in the memory lane, we saw the kind of uh, vibrance that was witnessed in uh, the 1970s, the 1980s, and of course the 1990s, of course, so probably when talking about the 1980s, the, the coup attempt uh, was orchestrated by students from uh, the University of Nairobi. And of course, other things, other good things when it comes to fighting for democracy were done by student leaders leaders. But um, in the 2000s and uh, 
but when the vibrance now was not so much as it was in the previous years, uh, students did not take up their role. So assuming that, of course, maybe you get into position and you champion for uh, the scrapping off of uh, this uh, 2015 University Amendment Bill, what are some of uh, the priorities that uh, you might want student leadership to go back to? Because um, student leadership does not just end at the university level because, uh, you know, the student leaders, of course, when they go outside, they become the national leaders. So what are some of the things that uh, you feel that uh, the student leadership should also be addressing nationally? Um, Kerala, we'll start with you. I think, first of all, as students, and again, I say students, mm -hmm. um, and what we also need to realize is that we are a very big part of the youth. Mm -hmm. We are meant to be the watchdogs, per se, of the government as is. So even with the new government that's coming in, we need to be able to see and be able to gauge what exactly is happening. Mm -hmm. Be able to stand up when things go wrong, be able to applaud them when things go right. Mm -hmm. Again, in this instance, what we have is a watchdog that is tied to a chain. And what, do you, what happens in that case? If a thief gets in, you can't be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So what we would want to do, or what I would want to do in that capacity mm -hmm. is at least have a system of students and youth as a whole within the country who can stand up and point out issues that we're facing. Right. Stand up and point out when things are not going in the direction we want to, mm -hmm. and at least be able to bring out the solutions, bring out the ideas, because we are a brilliant lot, and I mm -hmm. think that will make a very big difference. All right, interesting. So Harrison, uh, what do you feel? Uh, student leadership, what role really should it be playing in terms of uh, the national leadership? Because um, in terms of uh, being elite, you know, the people from the tertiary learning institutions, you understand some of these policies better than uh, the people who elect leaders to go and make them in parliament. So what role do you feel that um, the student leadership should also be playing in the national politics? Yeah, so for me, I feel that uh, one, we should uh, strengthen the regional, the regional student leadership organizations, especially the national ones, mm -hmm. so that, uh, because if we need a voice and mm -hmm. if we need a platform that we can address and shape even the decisions that are being made nationally, mm -hmm. we need also to unite. So, and uh, if we don't have a strengthened uh, platform mm -hmm. that these students and these leaders can uh, express themselves freely. Mm -hmm. Because I would uh, say that uh, as much as we are student leaders in the university, also the university mm -hmm. has a structure and has a management. Yes. So sometimes we are just constrained to the issues matters that university mm -hmm. and we are not able to come out and speak on behalf of the students mm -hmm. in a proper manner and also address the national issues. Mm -hmm. But if we can strengthen this regional organizations, mm -hmm. which now will be making statement on behalf of so many students, especially now from different institutions, mm -hmm. that can now give us a chance even to be part of the table and be able to shape the opinion mm -hmm. nationally. Right. Again, also, it's a collaboration because mm. we need also to go and uh, sit down with the readers and uh, also the ministries that uh, are in charge mm -hmm. of us as the students and us as the youth so that we get a platform and we know where we can collaborate mm -hmm. so that we don't just come out to speak on the negatives, mm -hmm. but we also participate in the positives. Right. Yeah. Interesting. No, um, probably because uh, my director is telling me we need to be winding this up, but I also need to give you, of course, this platform, uh, because now that you are future leaders, of course, now we saw during the campaigns, the politicians were making promises to the electorates that uh, maybe in the hundred, first hundred days in office, this is what we want to achieve, this is what we want to deliver to our electorates. So now that you're also eyeing very prime positions in the student leadership, I want to start with your career. Uh, um, what are the needs that uh, what are the needs of uh, your electorates that uh, you'd wish to address of course when you rise to uh, this position first and foremost I would want to say that in our institution we have the talent we have the skills we have the knowledge but one of the key things we lack are opportunities so what I want to do and what I have done in the recent past is try and really uh, work on and uh, exploit the opportunities that we have out there. Because let me give you for example, you might have the best talent, you might have the best journalists, best mathematicians, mm -hmm. best businessmen, but you do not have a chance to link up to the world. Mm 
What we are planning to do is to have strategic partnerships, be able to talk to organizations that can actually take our students, be able to bring these things closer because yes, we do have the opportunities and we have the people who are in need of the opportunities, but what we lack is the accessibility. Mm -hmm. So one of the key things we'd want to do is create more opportunities. And I strongly believe with that, we will creating a better pipeline for students between the outside world and the institution itself. Right. Amazing. So um, for you, Harrison, uh, mm -hmm. what do you feel are the needs of your electorates that uh, when you clinch this position, probably you wish to give them priority and address them in your uh, leadership? Yeah, first uh, I would address the quality of education mm -hmm. in our institution because currently you get, uh, the students are not getting the right information in the way they are supposed to be taught. It's mm -hmm. not being done in the best manner. Actually, if you check even the feedback from the students on matters lecturers, on matters equipments, they are not getting to the capacity they are supposed to get it. Mm -hmm. So for me, one is to address the quality of education. Second, matters policies. We have so many policies. I served as a Congress person, and I can tell you there are so many policies which are in these institutions that are constraining the students even to express themselves, talk of social media policies, mm -hmm. talk of of other policies which if uh, you just address something that you can't just come out and speak freely because of this policy. So for me, one I would love to change a number of policies which uh, I will list down in my manifesto mm -hmm. and again change the quality of education and lastly address matter student welfare which now carries the accommodation, security mm -hmm. and other issues of the students which right now they are not being addressed and they are there is need and a gap, there is that gap that uh, we 